Welcome to the Yoshi Football Show. This is John Johnston of CornNation.com. We're here with Yoshi Hardrick, former Husker offensive lineman and current Canadian Football League star, even though they're not playing this season. We're going to talk about the yesterday's debacle of a game against Illinois. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, 41 to 23. It was pretty horrifying. What, what yeah. initial, it, you give us your initial impressions of the game. Oh, impressions. Man, we had black uniforms on. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, we, I don't know. We couldn't. We couldn't really get anything going. We couldn't really get a stop on defense. I don't know. We couldn't find the juice, in my opinion. We. Was, I was looking for the couple players that we had, at a couple stars. I think they're the stars, or it could be stars. I was looking for those guys to make plays. I don't know. I think we just missed a lot of opportunities. I think when the 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 ball finally got there, sometimes we didn't drop them. We didn't get the ball downfield when we needed to. Ah, uh, it was just a rough one. Man. I've been in a game like that when you can't do nothing right and. Man, when is this game going to be over? <laughs> I only played high school football. And I, you know, I grew up in a small town like you did, but I played because there wasn't enough people and they had to have somebody playing football. So, you know, I got to play a little bit, but I do remember being run over by teams a couple times where you look up and it's the third quarter and you're like, my God, this is like hell. Nebraska. Know, the the first offensive play of the game, Luke McCaffrey comes out, throws a pass that looks like it's a forward pass. It gets ruled a backwards pass, and Illinois gets the ball ready to score, and they go in three plays later. What does that start do to a team? Man, that 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 momentum from that play, I think, set the tone for the game. Just um, you can feed off so much of that. A turnover on the first play of the game, and you're already close into scoring, and you get one in, and you just ride that way for the rest of the game. And also, from being an offensive player, if you give up a sack the first play of the game or you give up like a pick six or a big play the first play of the game, you start to think a little bit more. You start to worry about the opponent a little bit more. So you're already losing the game. Now you're losing the mental side of it too. So it's a lot go into a, a, a big turnover early in the game especially when you're a young, when young players, a lot of young players are out there and you're just thinking way too much anyway. So that, that definitely could have uh, affected some of the younger Husky a lot more, especially a younger quarterback. And it's hard for a team to get the momentum back, man. But how do you get it back? I mean, you're a veteran, you played a gob, gobs of college ball, played uh, professional ball. I mean, is that is it up to the more experienced players to kind of pull everything together? Or is what happens? Uh, yes. See, when I was there and we had bad plays like that, we leaned on Rex Burkett a lot. We know we can run the ball. You look for your lead. You look for the guys who put in the extra work in the weight room who do who does the extra. Who when they talk, they barely talk, but when they talk, you listen. You look for those guys in those hard situations to make a play, or you put more on their shoulders and take some pressure off the younger guys so we can we can come out of this little funk but from being in that situation it's hard because you want you you want to get that touchdown right away you want to get the big play right away but just for me playing football so long to get out of a funk like that it comes with first down on first down three yards on four yards it's just a part of the game you can't get it back right away sometimes it happens like that but most of the time it's going to come with a long steady drive that you get three or seven at the end and slowly but surely you get a uh, three and out on defense. The next thing you know, we getting we getting out of this thing, and it just happens like that. You got to grind your way out of those things, but you need leaders. Well, that that this seems to be a problem with Nebraska, and well, let's just focus on this season. I mean, right now there doesn't seem to be a lot of leadership on this team, and like you said, you lo- you leaned on Rex Burkhead. I'm trying to think of an offensive player that is on the field that, I mean, who would you lean on in this situation? Luke starting his first game, Luke McCaffrey, uh, you know, Dedrick Mills and Ronald Tompkins is a newcomer running back. They were both out. Uh, do you lean on an offensive from, lineman? Do offensive linemen have that much pull on a team? 
Uh, I played with some good old linemen, but I, I wasn't here during the 90s and the 70s and 80s when the greats were here. Well, I'm not saying it against the guys I played with, but I'm pretty sure you could, but I, I don't think I've been around a lineman when I can just like, for us to get out of this funk, we're going to need to lean on a, a, an Dominican Sioux type old, old lineman or old, like a, a consensus all American old lineman. I'm thinking, I'm pretty sure you could. But from the team we have, I'm, I definitely would look at number one. I thought we was leaning on him. Then that big fumble, man, he was just running so hard. He was just trying to get some juice back to us. He was just, he was basically trying to do what we needed in the time. And yeah, I would have leaned on one and it just, such a bad thing that he fumbled, but he was he was basically doing exactly what I said. He was trying to get the team some juice. He was fighting for the extra yard. He was and it just just playing football. He gets script just fighting for the extra yards, man. That was Wandale Robinson. Yeah, Wandale Robinson. When you the defense got their black shirts this week. I last week I think I think we talked about the fact that well, you brought it up. You brought up the fact that the linebackers looked great last week, and this week the the entire defense looked like they didn't – it wasn't like they didn't know what they were doing. It was more like they weren't ready to play or they they didn't show up. They didn't have any energy. Like you mentioned, juice. How does that happen? I don't know, man. I've been looking for so many excuses. I didn't want to be too hard on the guys. The first thing that came to my head was, did they prepare for number one being a quarterback and he wasn't their quarterback? Then I thought about, no, you have to make coaching adjustments. I came – I just been looking for something, man. But if I was looking at anything in the game, if anything to make me happy, it probably was number – it probably was JoJo at linebacker or Luke at linebacker. But other than that, I, I think we just got moved on the D-line a little too much. I think the creases was there a little too much. And I don't want to just say the D-line didn't play well. I, I just – as far as the old line, you only need a little crease. And I just saw the, the creases that the running back needed, they was there – a little more than they needed to be. And I don't know why we couldn't find that juice, man. I was, I was looking for, I was looking for Cam Taylor to make a play. I was looking for number eight. To, I was looking for Deontay Williams to make a play. I was just looking for that one play. I thought when Will Honus made the sack, made the sack early in the game, I was like, this is what we needed. This is where it's going to come from. This might swing the game. I don't know, man. It, it just didn't happen. But we needed the juice. We needed somebody to come up and make a head play. And I'm, I'm I'm actually glad that Collins Miller's okay. Yeah, yeah, but that that was good news. Have you have you ever had to go through that where one of your teammates is on the field and injured and not moving and? Oh, I can't I can't recall, but I've been on the field when uh, other teammates. I mean, other the other team has been hurt and the scratches came out. I don't know, man. It's hard to get back in the game because. You love the game of football. You play the game of football. And you that fear never really comes until you see it. You never really think about that fear until you own a knee and it's right in front of you. Like, wow, that could have been me that play. And it takes – it. anytime that it happens, from my experience, it takes me three to four or five plays to get back to, okay, I got no fear. Let me throw my head back in here or let me do this. But right after the scratcher leaves the field, after the prayers, after the silence in the stadium for a little bit, even with fans or without fans, the next play is never really like a football play for me. It's like a fill out. Am I okay? Is, is this is this okay for me to use my neck or something? And man, yeah, that 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 is a tough situation. You never really think about the injury or the tough part in football until you see a guy laying down there, and that's when you like, should I even be playing this? Nebraska. <laughs> We don't appear to have any kind of offensive identity. It, it, you see, guy, like Xavier Betts looks like he could be an excellent football player, but then you barely see him on the field. Uh, we don't seem to have a go-to play in the running game that we can execute and know that everybody's going to execute it consistently all of the time, you know, and that's kind of the key is – there's the consistency. They're just it, – it doesn't exist. Is, is, am I correct in saying that or way off base? Uh, no, you're, you're, so, you're somewhat right in there. I don't want to say you're somewhat wrong, but we need <laughs> – like, like, like Illinois, they, the pin and pull looked like that was their identity. 
They had guys, they set up the edge, they got the mismatch. They had a couple guys pinned down. They had a couple guys pull. It looked like their identity on their offense. We get our pin and pull going. And I just can't think of a play we got like that besides I, – I, I can't say our identity is a quarterback draw. I, I think I see quarterback draw more than anything on our team. But early in the game, I saw the offense starting to starting to mess. I, started, I saw the, uh, the, um, the zones and the receivers going in most. I started – all the look alike, so it's making it hard for a defense to think. Then as the game went on, we couldn't get as more tricky and more open a playbook up as more because we was down. And early in the game, I think we kept them off balance. We was bringing guys in motion. We was faking it to Wondell. Uh, Luke was coming out the backside. Then we gave it to Wondell a couple of times. And, like, that, just doing them, them formation, those motions, I think we kept them off balance. And as the game went on, we was down, and we just had to be bland and, like, we're going to air it out. I think it made it a little bit more easier for an Illinois team that's coached by Lovey Smith, you know, one of the greats on defense. And it played right into their hands. <laughs> we could we couldn't get their offense off the field for love or money. Is there anything you specifically you saw? Was there anything I don't know. I don't know this part of the game very well, but I mean scheme wise on defense, did we do stuff wrong? Or were guys just not there playing with juice like you say I, don't, I think I think the guys they call the right plays I think um we had guys in position we I think we just had guys get moved out the way it comes down to a the coach can make the call or the coach doesn't make the right call the players can make them right I think it came down to a I was watching the O and D line a lot in this game and I was looking for why is these big plays keep happening why is the running back keep getting four to five yards and it all came down to the interior of the O&D line, all you seen was a little displacement or a yard or two moved and then running backs hit it. And you can do that three to four times, and that's the first down. And you just keep doing that. Then a big one to come after later if somebody's trying to trying too hard to make the play and the gap is this big now. That's how the 56-yard runs come and the 40-yard runs come because you're tired of giving up You're tired of giving up the three and four yards run, so you, you try to be superhero, and that's when a bigger play comes and. Man, I don't, I don't, I think we, I think we had the bodies in the position, in the places that need to be, and I think they just got moved. In other words, we got outplayed, basically, our offense. Last week, I think on one of my podcasts, I mentioned that against Penn State, we finally looked like we had the offensive and defensive lines that were ready to play in the Big Ten. And then this week, we're back to, we're not ready to play in the Big Ten in the lines. I, is all of that just a mental factor going into a game, or is it just that uh, that Illinois, a team we were supposed to beat by 14 or 16 points, I don't remember which the spread kind of moved around there. They Were they just better? Are they better this game? Or, I guess I'm going back to the same thing. This, yeah. I don't mean to be rude to these guys, but we look like a weak football team. And when I say that, I mean mentally weak. You know, they look like they don't know how to come back from bad things. And the bad thing happened on the very first play of the game. And they just as well have shut the game down after that. And you mentioned, you know, leaning on Rex or leaning on somebody. Maybe it's just, is it just a matter of, of having finding those leaders and having them understand that you have to pull this stuff together to, to get this team to be better. Yeah. So understanding the finding those leaders and it's the guys, the understanding the pressure that come with those. You, I think our team is so young that you don't want to put that pressure on a freshman quarterback or a sophomore receiver or a sophomore running back. It's not just you don't want to put that pressure on them. It, can they can they handle that pressure right now? Can they accept that right now and still be the same great Wondell, the same great McCaffrey, even if we had to put more on their shoulders and know that they had to pull everyone up, not just itself or the offense, this entire state. When things go bad, it is on you. Like, that is a lot to tell an 18 to 19-year-old guy that when we go bad, I need you to save this state. I need you to <laughs> save this tradition. Like... Uh, it comes I, – I can see the guys – I hate to say this, but I, I can just see in two to three years, like these freshmen and sophomores now, we'll be able to get out of those funks. But like you said, man, I, don't, I wouldn't say we looked as weak, but I, it, didn't, it didn't look good up front for me for the O&D line. I, 
I was at the game last, um, I was at the game against Penn State and I was like, this is impressive. I could see the old line moving the D line. I could see the D line was stopping around. And now the next week, I I saw the D lineman getting moved around quite a bit much. I really didn't like that. But far as the off far as the offense, we maybe gave up a little too many hits on the quarterback. I think the run game was still – I think the run game was awesome. I think McCaffrey had a lot of yards and one day had a lot of yards, still rushing. But when we had to pass, sometimes the edges broke down sometimes in pass protection. But, man, I don't, I don't know what we have to do, but we have to get out the funk and we have to find some guys we can lean on. I'm, I'm talking about truly lean on when things <laughs> get bad, that if we have to give you 30 carries a game and throw you screen plays, 10 games, we have to get somebody we can give 30, 30 times a game and I, like you said, Xavier Betts needs the ball. Wondell needs the ball. Seven needs the ball. I don't know. Does two need the ball? Adrian, I mean, does uh, Adrian need the ball also? I don't, I'm trying to be positive. Put them all out there on the field. We need to find something. And when we ever find something that gives us a little juice, we run with it. So we, we, we have Iowa coming up this weekend. Uh, I. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna swear on this podcast, but uh, there's all sorts of things I could say about Iowa. I have hated Iowa as a football team for a very long time, way before Nebraska joined the Big Ten. I think it goes all the way back to 1982 when they beat us when I was in college, and Nebraska started 0 and 2, and the whole state, like you mentioned, was going insane. Tom Osborne needed to be fired. It was a weird year. And uh, Iowa did that to us. I've always blamed them. Did you play against Iowa? You you had them was, for a year. Yeah, you yes, were like my one senior of the first guys to play against Iowa, right? Yes, it was my senior year. It was the first year of the what is the trophy called now? The Hero Trophy. This is the Heroes Trophy. Yes, it was my first year we played that Iowa. And I didn't know how much hate we had for Iowa going into that week. The homegrowns, the NWOs, the Nebraska walk-ons, the the pride here let us know that this is a big game because my first year it turned, came down to the last game on Thanksgiving was Colorado. I didn't know how much we hated Colorado. So now it was the Iowa that year. And and it was amazing how much we hated the black and yellow and how much we wanted to beat them and how much this meant to us and how much it would meant to the state. And yeah, I was the team that we hate now and I'm with you. So this is a big <laughs> one this week. <laughs> So have you watched them play football at all this year? Not this year. In the past, I have. Uh, I don't know how it works, but in, in Canada, we get a lot more Iowa games than we do Nebraska <laughs> games. I don't know how that works. So I, I see Iowa and Minnesota games a lot when I'm in Canada. So I, I actually get to watch them a lot more than I like to. And the last couple of years, I've liked what they've built on. They have, they've had some tight ends going the first round. They've been running the ball good. They play good defense. That it has some big quarterbacks who can throw it when they needed to in the past. I don't know about this year, but if I'm thinking Big Ten football, we got to be able to stop the run and we got to be able to move around. Nothing, nothing new in the Big Ten. So what they're gonna? I mean, the fear is the fear is that we're gonna walk out against Iowa and be this team that shows no fire or spark. I mean that that's not a good omen if Nebraska starts the game. They got to start. They have to have a good start, and then they have to mentally stay focused in this game coming up. For me, that's what it's about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This, I'm, I'm with you. I want us to start fast, but like you said, this week I want to see did they grow or something. When the bad happens against Iowa, will we respond? Will somebody? Will we find that leader that we were talking about earlier in this in the show? Will we find that guy? Because if it happens one week, I want to see what would happen is the next week. Is somebody ready to step up? Are we ready to find a way to when this happens that we can get out of this? Once you get out of it once, you know you can get out of it twice. So I just want to know, that'll, that'll be a big indicator for me. Are we growing? Are we getting better? Because you, it's, we try to go off wins and losses, but we have, to, we have to look at the mental side of this thing also. When the bad plays happen and we usually shut down, though, I feel like the juice don't come. I wouldn't say we shut down. This is our opinion. But, like, when the bad plays happen, we don't feel like anything, the juice or anybody came back and took control of it. Bad plays are going to happen in hour. When that happens, I just want to see how do, are we going to respond. Are we going to come out of this funk? Are we going to find that leader we need? 
because like you said, we can't come out with no juice against Iowa. Anybody's going to, anytime these two teams meet, it's going to be action pack. It's going to be some hate in there. It's going to be some rival. So a team that comes out flat in a game like this, it's going to be hard to recover. <sighs> Is there anything else that I haven't, I, I, let me ask you this. You attended, you didn't go to yesterday's game, but you did go to the previous week's game against Penn state you played against 90,000 fans at, at Memorial Stadium. What was it like going to a game where there was, I don't know, maybe a few hundred fans, maybe friends and family, right? Oh, uh, I know it was quiet. I didn't, I've never heard the guy next to me talking before at Memorial Stadium until that last weekend. And um, when the defense went out there, me and my son, we were so ready to cheer, but it felt like, when we got up to cheer, we was such an oddball. Like, you see some people cheer, but we was just way too loud. So it got to a thing. We were just watching the game. But, yes, I'm used to when the defense on the field, the, the the sea of red is going crazy. You're all in. I'm used to being on the field. I'm out there getting the defense hyped up. So I was trying to give my son that experience. But it wasn't anything like that. So it was a totally different animal. It was just great to be in the stadium. You can see the people that were there were truly fa uh, truly family or the people who worked there, the faculty, and they was there to support. They was there to try and do the most, but it was very quiet. I know the players had to bring their own juice. I couldn't imagine. Now that I think about it, I might have to play next year without fans. We have to bring our own juice. You have to bring your own juice. I see that now. Well, have you, have you ever done that where you played without any fans? I mean, even in high school? No, in, in high school, we probably average five to ten care games. It's basically like without playing with fans in arena football when you have four to three hundred people at a game. So it was basically – that's how those games felt. Like, only people at these games are the people are your girlfriends and your moms and dads. So at these arena football games, and those were the people who were there. Those people would get a little happy. But it was a quiet game. It was a quiet game. I don't I don't like a quiet football game. I I don't know. I, I think I like to know is I like when a guy hits the sideline and the stadium feel like it's going to fall. I, I miss the go big red chance. I miss the, the wave. I miss you. You miss all of that. If you've been to a game, you've seen that. If you've seen that and you go to a game, you don't see that. It feels like some missing. But the Hushy got a win, so none of that mattered. But it was a lot different. I, and I really look forward to getting back into a, a full, full stance. Any any more impressions about Illinois? Anything I didn't mention, or even Iowa coming up that you want to? Well, uh, no. Hats off to Illinois. They came in here and they had a plan. They came in here. And they wanted to take the ball away. You seen from the very first snap to the end. First snap, I don't think was a backwards pass, but from the from, you just see the defense flew around. They aimed for the football. They wanted the ball out, and they came in here and they wanted to run the ball on us. And I think. Kudos to them. They came in here with a game plan. They stuck to it. They got it done. Um, yeah, it's still go big red over here, though. You know what? We'll end with that. Uh, stay positive, everybody. It's Thanksgiving week. Enjoy time with their families. It's not probably as big a thing as it uh, has been in the past, but you still got love all around you, right? Right. We all got love all around us. Yeah. So go big red. This is uh, John Johnston and Yoshi Hardrick signing off.